So I'm going over a cost-benefit model. Specifically, I'm going to go over a model of the time a student spends studying. And this will cover a few other economic concepts. It'll cover choice variables, opportunity cost, first order conditions, diminishing marginal benefits, and increasing marginal costs. So there's three basic models when you're talking about microeconomic theory. There's You can maximize the benefit minus the cost, you can maximize the benefit subject to a constraint, and you can minimize the cost subject to a constraint. And this video looks at the first one in detail. So the model we're going to look at is going to be someone who is maximizing by choosing the time they spend studying, their grades, which is a function of the time they spend studying, minus their opportunity cost, which is also a function of the time they spend studying. So studying here is going to be our choice variable, and that means that the student has uh, control over that variable. All models are modeling some kind of human decision making. So we know there's an inherent decision maker in this model, and that decision maker is whoever has control over the choice variable. In this case, it's the student who chooses the time spent studying. So S is study time, and they do that by, by weighing the costs of studying against the benefits of studying. And if there aren't costs and benefits, then we might get zero hours studied or um, an infinite number of hours studied, and neither of those can work in a model. So we need two forces that are pulling our choice of hours spent studying in both directions. So those choices are going to be our benefit which is our grades when we study, our grades increase, and our cost, which is the opportunity cost of our time. And those are the two forces that influence the student's decision. So first what we're going to do is we're going to graph the student's um, grades as a function of time spent studying. And when you graph these, you're always going to put the choice variable on your x-axis. So we're going to have time spent studying on our x-axis. We're going to have that on both our benefit and cost x-axis. And we're going to have grades on our y-axis to graph grades versus time spent studying. And we know that there's a maximum grade we can get. We can get a, let's just put this on a 4.0 scale. So the maximum grade we can get is an A. It's a 4.0. And we know that um, if we don't study, we're, we're not going to pass the class, so I'll just start that at zero. The first few hours we spend studying are really important. We increase our grades a lot in those first few hours of studying because then we have some kind of mastery of the material. But after we've studied 10 hours in one week on the same subject, adding that 11th hour of studying doesn't do actually that much to increase our grades. It does increase our grades a little bit, but it's going to be by a smaller amount than the first hour studying. So going from zero to one hour studying, we get a very big increase in our grades. We might go from not passing to passing. Um, after we've studied for 10 hours, that 11th hour um, doesn't actually increase our, our GPA by that much. It increases it a little bit, and that's diminishing marginal benefit. Um, then let's graph our cost function, and here our costs are our opportunity cost of time spent studying. And there tends to be an increasing marginal cost. So cost functions tend to have this shape. And let's think about in this particular situation, why is that the case? Well, the first hour of studying, what do you have to give up? You might give up some time spent surfing the internet or time watching television. It's not really that costly to study an hour a week. Um, so opportunity cost is measured in what do you give up to spend that time studying. So for the first hour, what you give up might be TV time or surfing internet time. Um, after you've studied a few hours, what are you going to give up next? Well, that might be, um, this might be time at the gym. So if you've already studied five or six hours, you've given up all of your internet surfing time, all of your TV time, you might have to forgo going to the gym. And that's, that's, the gym is more valuable than the TV time, so you're giving up more valuable time as you study more. And then if you've already given up your gym time, what do you give up next? You might give up time spent socializing, which is more important. That's important for your mental health. It's important for your emotional health. Um, but to study more after you've given up your TV time, internet time, and gym time, you have to give up the next most valuable thing to you, which is socializing. And then after that, if you've studied um, long enough, you're going to eventually have to give up time sleeping 
and time eating. So um, because people tend to give up the least valuable time first and the most valuable time last, that's why our um, opportunity cost has this shape of increasing marginal cost. The more you study, the more important the thing is that you're giving up every single hour you're studying. So that's why we have increasing marginal cost and diminishing marginal benefit. So how do we think of those in a model? What, how do we think of this person's decision on how much to study? Well, let's put our, our benefit and our cost on the same graph. And I'm just going to call benefit and cost, benefit and cost here. We know our benefit is grades and our cost is opportunity cost. So I'm just going to pick up these functions and move them over there. Here's our benefit function, our grades, and here's our cost function. Let's move that onto the same graph. There's our cost function. And the person wants to maximize benefit minus cost, so they have to choose the time they spend studying to, to come up with the maximum value here. And we know they're not going to choose this value, even though sometimes in economics we do choose the value where things cross. They don't want to choose that because here benefit minus cost is equal to zero. The benefit and the cost are the same, and they want more than zero value. And they notice in this region here, the benefit is greater than the cost, so we actually have positive value here, benefit minus cost. So where are we going to choose um, our studying if we want to maximize benefit minus cost? It's going to be at the biggest bulge, which looks like it happens right about here. And this is going to be our optimal time spent studying. Um, and we can even graph this. We can graph this in a... Um, benefit minus cost down here, which is what we're trying to maximize. And that's just going to be the difference between these two lines. So if they both start at zero, this starts at zero here. Here we have this amount, um, if we're studying this amount, here's our benefit minus our cost, so we can put that on a graph. Um, and as we, as we increase um, our time spent studying, at first we're going to increase our benefit minus our cost. And then that maximizes itself right um, where the distance between these two is the biggest. And it reaches zero right here. So um, there is our time spent studying graphed against benefit minus cost. This person is trying to maximize benefit minus cost, so they're going to choose this optimal amount of studying. Um, where does that happen? Well, the optimal amount always happens where the slope of the tangent is equal to zero. And that is our first order condition. Our first order condition is just setting the derivative of our maximization function equal to zero. And it also so happens that that's also where the marginal benefit, which is given by the slope of the tangent of the benefit function, is exactly equal to marginal cost. So those two are parallel. And what I just graphed was marginal benefit equals marginal cost. And that's working entirely through this benefit minus cost problem where we're choosing the time we spend studying to maximize grades minus opportunity cost of studying.